Where are we? Uh, we're in Lurkerbad in Switzerland. This is the bat. Some bats here, the Burgerbad bats. That's right. And it's snowing, as you can see, and the water's warm enough to keep us warm. And I am actually going to continue reading a Midsummer Night's Dream, trying not to get my book wet. This is, uh, in case any of you are curious, uh, Act 3, Scene 2. Enter Oberon, King of Fairies. I wonder if Titania be awake. Then, what it was that next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. Ah, here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? What knight rule now about this haunted grove? My mistress, with a monster, is in love, near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her dull and sleeping hour. A crew of patches, rude mechanicals, that work for bread upon Athenian stalls. We are met together to rehearse a play, intended for great Theseus nuptial day. The shallowest thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their sport, <laughs> Merci. forsook his scene and entered in a break, when I did him at this advantage take an ass's knoll I fixed it on his head. Anon his thisbe must be answered, and forth my mimic comes, when they him spy, as wild geese that the creeping fowler eye, or russet-tated cloths, many in sort, rising and cawing at the gun's report, sever themselves and madly sweep the sky. So, at his sight, away his fellows fly. And at our stamp, here o'er, and o'er one falls. He murder cries, and help from Athens calls. Their sense thus weak, lost with their fears thus strong, made senseless things begin to do them wrong. <laughs> For briars and thorns at their apparel snatch, some sleeves, some hats, some yielders all things catch. I led them on in this distracted fear, and left sweet Pyramus translated there. When in that moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked, and straightways loved an ass. Chez moi. <laughs> this falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet lacked the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I bid thee do? I took him sleeping. That is finished too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked, of course, she must be eyed. Enter, enter Demetrius and Hermia. Hermia. Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman. But not this the man. <laughs> oh, I rebuke you him that loves you so. Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Now I but chide, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, has given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being or shoes and blood, blood plunge in the deep and kill me too. The sun was not so true unto the day as he to me. Would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermia? I'll believe as soon this whole earth may be bored, and that the moon may through the center creep and so displease her brother's noontide with the Antipodes. It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look, so dead, so grim. <laughs> so should the murdered look, and so should I, pierce through the heart with your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look as bright, as clear, as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. Bonjour. <laughs> What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Ah, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass to my hounds. Out, dog, out, cur! Thou drivest me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth, be never numbered among men. Oh, once tell true, tell true even for my sake. Durst thou have looked upon him being awake, and hast thou killed him sleeping? Oh, brave touch! Could not a worm, an adder, do so much? An adder did it. For with deadlier tongue than thine, thy serpent never adder stung.
Defend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get, therefore? <laughs> a privilege never to see me more, and from thy hatred presence part I so see me no more, whether he be dead or no. <laughs> There is no following her in this fierce vein. How therefore for a while I will remain. So sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow. For debt that bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe. Which now in some slight measure it will pay. Before his tender here I make some stay. Nous allons dedans maintenant. Okay, keep going. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken flight and laid the love juice on some true love site. Of thy misprision must perforce ensue some true love turned and not a false turn through. Then fate or rules that one man holding troth a million fail confounding oath on oath. About the wood goes swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens wilt thou find, all fancy six years and tale of cheer, with sighs of love that toss the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou bring her here, I'll charm her eyes again she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than an arrow from the Tartar's bow. Woohoo! <laughs> This purple dial, hit with Cupid's archery, sink an apple of his eye. When his love he got a spy, let us shine as, as glorious lie as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakes, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Enter Puck, captain of our fairy band. Helena is here at hand. And the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be! Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to wait. Then will two at once woo one. That must needs be sport alone. And those things do best please me that befall preposterously. Okay. <laughs> A further shake beer? Do you want to Why should you think that I should ruin scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. <laughs> when I vow, I weep. And vows, so more. Their nativity, all truth appears. How can these things in me seem scorn to you, bearing the badge of faith to prove them true? <laughs> you do advance your cunning more and more, when truth kills truth. O oh, devilish holy prey, these vows are Hermia's. Will you give her or? Lay oath with oath, and you will nothing lay. Your vows to her and me put into scales will even weigh, as bulk, as light, as pale. I had no judgment when I to her swore. Nor none, in my mind, now you give her or. Stop or continue? Oh, so yeah, we can get going. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helen, goddess, nymph, divine. To what my love shall I compare thine eyes? Crystal is muddy, oh how ripe and show thy lips, those kissing cherries, tempting grow. That pure, congealed white, high Taurus snow, fanned with eastern winds, turns to a crow. When thou holds up thy hand, oh let me kiss this princess of pure white, this seal of bliss. Oh, spice, oh how! Oh. I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. 
you were civil and knew my courtesy, you would not do me this much injury. Can you not hate me, as I know you do, but you must join in souls to mock me too? If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so, to vow to swear, and <laughs> super praise my parts, <laughs> when I am sure you hate me with your hearts. You both are rivals, and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena, a trim exploit, a manly enterprise, to conjure tears up in a poor maid's eyes with your derision, not of noble sort, would so offend a virgin, and to extort a poor soul's patience, all to make you sport. D'accord. Allons-y. All right. Uh, we're still here in the Leukerbad Spa Bath, this huge three-floor area. It's amazing. We're about to go back outside again. It's a pool that's different than the one before. We're uh, still on Act 3, Scene 2. This is uh, line 162, Lysander speaking. You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so, for you love Hermia. This you know I know. And here, with all goodwill, with all my heart, in Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. And yours of Helena to me bequeath, whom I do love, and will do till my death. Never did doctors waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep thy Hermia, I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. Guest-wise is sojourned, and now to Helen is at home returned, there to remain. Helen, it is not so. Disparage not the faith thou dost not owe. Lest to thy peril thou abide dear. Look where thou love come. Yonder is thy dear. <laughs> Dark night that from the eye his function takes, the ear more quick of apprehension makes, wherein it doth impair the seeing sense. It pays thy hearing double recompense. Thou art not by mine eye, Lysander found. Mine ear, I thank it, brought me to thy sound. But why untimely didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love, and would not let him bide, fair Helena, to more and gild the night than all yon fiery o's and eyes of light. Why seek'st thou me? To not this, make thee know, the hate I bear thee made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think. It cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this cow derision? It's all the counsel that we two have shared. The sisters' vows, the hours that we have spent, when we have chid the hasty-footed time for parting us, oh, is all forgot. All school days friendship, childhood innocence. <laughs> we, Hermia, like two artificial gods, have with our needles created both one flower, both on one sampler sitting on one cushion, both warbling of one song, both in one key. As if our hands, our sides, voices and minds had been incorporate, so we grew together, like to a double cherry, seeming parted, but yet in union, in partition. Two lovely berries molded on one stem, so with two seeming bodies but one heart, two of the first, like coats in heraldry, due but to one and crowned with one crest. But will you rent our accident asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? Up with the Shakespeare, eh? <laughs> Is that friendly? Just not maidenly? Our sex, as well as I, may chide you for it. Though I alone do feel the injury. 
I am amazed at your passionate words. <laughs> I scorn you not. It seems you scorn me. <laughs> I do not set my standard, as in scorn, to follow me and praise my eyes and face, and made your other love, Demetrius, who even but now just firm me with his foot to call me goddess, nymph, divine, and fair. Who <laughs> is Precious Celestial? Where? <laughs> wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore doth the man of the deny your love, so rich within his soul, and tender me for sweet affection, by your setting on, by your consent? What? Though I be not so in grace as you, so hung upon with love, so fortunate, but miserable most, to love unloved, is you should pity rather than despise. I understand not what you mean by this. upon me when I turn my back. Wink each at each other. Hold the jest up. This sport, well chronicled. <laughs> this sport, well carried, shall be chronicled. <laughs> If you have any pity, grace or manners, you would not make me such an argument. But fare you well, tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena, hear my excuse, my love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent! <laughs> Do not scorn her soul. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Huh. Thou canst compel no more than she will treat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee. By my life I do. I swear by that which I will lose for thee to prove him false that says I love not thee. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Good, come. My head. Where two tens all this? Away, you Ethiop. No, no. They seem to break loose. Two hours we fire, but yet unless two or three men go, I have to attack. And so, they bring it loose. For I will shoot thee from me like a serpent. And then for me. What kind of this is that? Now, now, out, 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 I have your band. That machine, a weak band holds you. I not trust your word. Thank you. Hey!
and from each other look thou leave them thus, till o'er their brows death counterfeiting sleep, with leaden legs and batty wings doth creep, then crush this herb into Lysander's eye. This liquor hath this virtuous property, to take from thence all error with his might, and make his eyeballs roll with want of sight. When they wake next, all this division shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. Now, go thy way. Greatness constraineth me. 
to make it out my life by the cold bed. My days approach. What could be different? A weary night. A long and tedious night. A big eyes shine comfort from the east. But I went back to Athens by daylight. From these that my fear company detest, and sleep that sometimes sets up sails I still me alive for my own company. <laughs> Yet that three can run more. Who is this kind of most of fear? Though she comes first and sad, she feels an overslab. Thus to make poor females mad. Never so rude, never so in love. They be gathered with the two and turn the flowers. I can no further cry, no further go. My legs can keep no place with my desires. Then will I rest with the break of day. I will assured lie shoulder, and will be a boy. On the ground, still a sound. I apply to your eyes. Gentle lover, when it is. When they are reached, thy touch, true delight. In the sight of thy former lady's eye, and the country proverb known that every man should take his own. In your waiting shall be shown, Jack shall have Jill, Mark shall go ill, the man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well.